Everyone asks where this story uh, starts from. I get the pleasure of telling a story of really so many um, uh, characters who've um, made this day and the ability to tell this story possible. Um, but I sort of want to start what I think is, at least from my perspective, the beginning. There is a, uh, uh, the former head of, of the industrial design department at the Rhode Island School of Design is a gentleman by the name of Mark Harrison. Mark passed away a few years ago. Uh, he was the pioneer of um, uh, universal design uh, at that institution. I do mean institution. Um, he uh, he uh, uh, created language like inclusive design. Um, he was uh, the father of human factors uh, for the program, uh, and he was a very, very inspiring character. Uh, in the latter part of his career, uh, he embarked on a program called the Universal Kitchen. Uh, the Universal Kitchen, if you're not familiar with it, it was uh, in the air. The Universal Kitchen project was really just a complete bottom-up, side-in, top-down rethink of something that we're all very familiar with, which is the kitchen. And he attacked it like he attacked all his problems uh, with completely open minds, um, inexperienced students, uh, and some bright professional advisors along the way. Um, the Universal Kitchen Project really just uh, 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 started to look at the kitchen and question what is modularity uh, besides 24 inches wide or 32 inches wide? What does systems integration mean in a way that benefits the cook, uh, the cleaner, or the uh, industry? Um, what is the human factors that are relevant to my grandmother and my uh, five-year-old son and the safety implications and the pleasure of cooking, um, which is a very interactive experience, as we all know. And uh, he allowed people to think um, outside of uh, being a pan maker or being a sink maker or being a refrigerator maker. Um, that program became a beacon for the entire sort of kitchen and bath association industry. Uh, where companies could look and say, oh, I get it. I actually get it. 24 inches wide and 32 inches wide for my cabinet systems is fairly irrelevant, arbitrary. Uh, and there's a new way to think about an entire category, but it was that beacon that was necessary to galvanize so many diverse people. Um, that's what this story is about today. had a heart attack at the wheel of a car, jumped the divider, and hit them head on. Who's a 13-year-old? Give me an approximation. The paramedics had trouble getting into the car, and there was some concern that he might not have been breathing during that period, and that he may have suffered some lack of oxygen to the brain. Dr. Darren Simon finds a crack in Sean's skull. Uh, CAT scan, though, you might need to go right now. Two, three. Raymond, uh, you're at University Hospital. Yeah. Your son is here also. He's over in CAT scan. Glad he's doing okay. What's your mom's name? Mary. Mary? What's your first name? Okay, <clears throat> hopefully no one's been uh, on one of those gurneys or near it or around it, but likely uh, some of us have. Uh, uh, if, if while watching that you couldn't see so much opportunity for improvement and systems integration and really good design thinking, uh, well, we're probably in the wrong room because it was just uh, fraught with opportunity. Um, so how do we attack a problem like that? And, uh, how did we even learn about it? Um, in, the, in the small world of, of um, Rhode Island, uh, my neighbor, literally, uh, was the head of the emergency department at, um, at uh, uh, Rhode Island Hospital. Uh, and he saw the Universal Kitchen Project. He read the press. He went to go look at the model. And he completely got it. And 
He said uh, in passing one day, hey, Steve, um, I saw that Universal Kitchen project. Do you think we could apply that thinking to the resuscitation bay? And I said, yes, absolutely. There's no question that we could help you. Um, and my question right after that is, what's a resuscitation bay? Um, and, uh, and that began a discussion. But there's a timing is everything component um, uh, to this story. Um, I think the story is about neighbors. I really do. It was my neighbor, Bert. Uh, it was our, our, our uh, neighbors. We're literally, physically, we were, until recently, neighbors with the hospital and our facility. Um, we're neighbors with Saul. <clears throat> we're neighbors with Brown. We're neighbors with the hospital. Um, and uh, the business innovation factory, and I'll be quite specific, Saul created this glue between neighbors to say, you know what, um, you've been talking about this idea of the trauma bay for quite some time. Let's actually do something about it. And I think with uh, well-timed leadership changes in the hospital with Dr. Brian Zink and Dr. Nate Siegel and uh, folks who are really interested in getting things done and not talking any further, uh, and with a little bit of cajoling and sort of almost higher purpose um, presence at the table with Saul, we were able to get everybody on the same page and say, let's do this. Uh, uh, it took a little money to do that. And uh, my favorite slide yesterday, Chris, was the blank slide of, we didn't use anybody else's money on this. Everybody at the table put $50,000 on the table. It was their investment into this initiative, cash. And it, uh, we all said that we were going to pay for this ourselves, and we are going to create the beacon that we can at least begin the conversation with, a conversation that has language created by Mark Harrison. Um, in that image, or in that video, here's my still shot of what I see when I see, when I see that video, and it's been hundreds of hours of video that we've had the benefit of looking at. This is the anti-blank slide of the, of the, of the, of the summit, maybe. Um, in that video, we probably saw 30 to 40 uh, technology, equipment, and uh, device companies that other than probably having a beer at the, at the industry trade show really do not talk to each other. They're competitive almost to a fault. I always think my observation is that there, you could get Mattel and Hasbro to probably sit down and have a conversation easier than you could Stryker and Smith and Nephew. It's a, it's a funny industry in that way. But that has to change. Um, uh, so 30 or 40 companies, what's the, there's, there's good news and bad news in that. Obviously it's fragmented from an integration standpoint, which means there's plenty of low hanging fruit for systems integration. Um, I think also from a business opportunity standpoint, there's no 800 pound gorilla that owns the trauma bay. Um, that's a great opportunity to challenge and redefine what a business model um, uh, could be in the future. Uh, you'll see lots of uh, little eyes, which are information transfers between people and between systems that is never ending and always changing. It's the ultimate telephone game, but the point is it's constantly changing. And if you can keep up with that change, maybe you'll shave 30 seconds off that window that was going to define life and death. Um, look at all these people. Uh, it is not uncommon while that very crowded room, which is about the size of my son's bedroom, uh, could have 8, 15, 20 people in it at one time. And forget about the EMTs and the freaking out parents that are also there with no regard for their presence in any way in the design and thinking of the bay. Critical to the soothing and comfort of the patient, by the way, which could also make the difference between uh, life and death. Um, let's see. Oh, just some other points. I'm, I need these notes because it's such a complex world. You saw more wires in a wireless world in that trauma bay than you could actually see. They're buried everywhere. They're connecting the patient to pieces of equipment that create not just trip hazards, but complete and utter confusion. There are tubes of good things going into the body, tubes of bad things coming out of the body. Um, and they're going much further away from the body than they actually need to go. And were we to avoid those trip hazards and those entanglements, again, 30 seconds. Um, this is my symbol of what good design is in this process. Hundreds of hours of videotape, 
thousands of photographs, hundreds of hours of, of um, interviews, uh, and one photograph of what's called a Braslow tape. A Braslow tape, and I'm probably going to get this wrong, Nate, so just yell at me if I confuse somebody. Let's just say a six-year-old comes in, and you really don't know what's going on with them, and you need to shoot them up with some morphine. You, you put this stick next to the body, and it pretty much tells you by drug how much you should be giving them. There are so many ways to accomplish that goal, but this is a stick. Um, it has the patina of I'm having some masonry work done in my house, and a Portuguese bricklayer's level is his life. And uh, it has the patina of the level of a Portuguese bricklayer. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, interestingly, everybody could tell you where that stick is. It has a, almost a ceremonious location in the, in the room because it's self-made. It's a tape that was taped to a stick that has a ceremonious place in the room. Everybody gets it. Um, let me just, again. I'm going to go switch right to where we are. Uh, you've all seen the rolling slideshow. Maybe you haven't. There's a rolling slideshow. There's a little booklet floating around that sort of gets us all on the same page of why we did this, where we're going, where we are, all of those good things. Um, uh, I have to credit an amazing cast of characters like Mark Harrison's students. We surrounded the problem with people who just weren't trained or uh, had thought about the category for very long. And um, they were really the legs and the eyes and the creativity behind a process that certainly needed the expertise of Dr. Siegel. It certainly needed some corralling by folks who've gone through this process before. But in 10 weeks, seven students who really worked the hours similar to every doctor's hours uh, in that world of a, a nearly 100 hours a week at times, um, accomplished uh, the beacon. Um, so I'm going to try to point, if I can, uh, I don't think this light's going to work. It doesn't really matter. Um, this is a sketch model. It's made of white foam core. Even in the language of trying to communicate with an academic institution and a, and a foundation, emergency medicine foundation, uh, they spoke in the language of white papers. We're doing a white paper. That's what we want to do. Uh, and, and we work in the, in the uh, world of models and things, so we compromised and we have a big white model. Uh, <laughs> And uh, uh, it's foam core. Uh, someone used the term, which I actually, I think, is a high compliment. Um, all this time in a play school model? <laughs> it's exactly what it is. It's a play school model. The temptation for these young students to whip out the alias and the Form Z and the virtual uh, operating suite that we could all experience, quote, is so irrelevant to someone who cherishes a stick. So the model, the, the iterative process of working in a, uh, in a, on a level, if you will, on a plane that was really relevant to the constituents at the table who were going to really make this possible was this model. And you're seeing the end of something that was just a scrap heap of change, but it's full scale. It's about the size of my son's bedroom. And it has everything, for the most part, in it that you saw in that chaos that we toured for a minute, minute and 20 seconds. Um, I'm going to point to almost a symbolic uh, example. There's much, by the way, that we're not pointing to. There's much, by the way, that is purposely vague. This is a commercial endeavor. Uh, we are good storytellers, but we're uh, uh, capitalists. And we're going to take our vision, and we're going to try to embrace industry and partners in a way that has a lot of value. Uh, so while we can't tell the whole story of what we've accomplished and what we've uncovered and where the vision may go, we can certainly put the beacon out there. And here's a specific that we affectionately refer to as the Siegel cart, after Dr. Nate Siegel, like the Braslow tape. Um, if you go into a Cumberland Farms and you speak to a 16-year-old and you ask them for a pack of cigarettes uh, uh, behind the counter, the design consideration in organizing and managing the cigarettes is uh, significantly more uh, involved and developed than any consideration that has gone into the organization of the consumables in the process. One conversation yesterday, I explained what we were doing to the reporter from the journal, and he had the instant message that his sister-in-law rearranges the cart before every case in Connecticut so she knows where things are. Simple, simple 
lowest hanging fruit, again, can save lives. If you look at these little uh, uh, compartments on the left and the right, uh, they're organized by section of the body. Uh, there is a corresponding color-coded tape along uh, the sides of the gurney. And if you've never been in a room before, you know exactly where the GU, GI stuff is. You know exactly where the vascular stuff is. And if we can hoodwink uh, the, the um, suppliers of these products to begin some standardization and packaging beyond just making it slightly greener, which is very easy to do in this case, uh, but make it standardized so that people all over the country uh, will not have to be rearranging uh, uh, these uh, life-saving um, components before their shift. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's an embedded product and service business model in that simple um, uh, 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 reorganization of, of all of those parts. It's interesting even in the process that many of these uh, attendees or nursing uh, techs um, are operating through different hospitals. So even in the room, the physical different trauma bays within a hospital, um, there are differences today, and obviously there are differences from hospital to hospital. The gurneys are smart, but not too smart. Uh, they take the place of, of uh, lots of redundant equipment. There are large screens that we've termed the scoreboards that basically can glean information from three or four monitors that you can't see, are usually being blocked by somebody, that looked really good on the CAD station and looked really good in the selling brochure, but in the environment, you simply can't read that information. And people are barking st uh, statistics at you that are changing all the time, creating more noise than is necessary and more confusion in the game of telephone. And so <clears throat> if we could consolidate that, no invention, there's like so little invention here um, that it, uh, 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 the low-hanging fruit is low. Um, as a Rhode Islander, I have to say, that used to have a bad connotation. Uh, and I'm, I'm quite proud to be part of a process where so many close neighbors can come together in a highly concentrated way um, and, uh, and, and set the vision. So thank you very much.